Hi everyone, welcome to Art and Talk. Art and Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art and their creativity and their passion. As you know, we're all about meeting artists and being inspired. We embrace the traditional arts and we also embrace the spiritual arts. And sometimes our guest overlaps on both. They have um, gifts in the spiritual arts and gifts in the traditional arts. And today, our guest does cover both of these areas, and she is an animal communication specialist, and she's also a visual artist. So we're going to dive into how these both are related, how they intertwine, and we'll dive deep into her story and her journey and find out about her connection with the animals and also her visual art um, work as well. And we, we'll be looking at a selection of some of her work too. So thank you so much for being with us today. I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Catherine O'Shea. Hi, Catherine. Welcome. Hello. Thank you so, so, so very much for that beautiful introduction and welcome. And hello to everybody out there watching. I'm so happy to connect with each of you. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, awesome. So glad to have you here on Art and Talk. All right. So um, from an early age, Catherine, you had a connection with animals. Could you just kind of, before we get into the rest of your journey, how did that happen and what was that experience like? Yeah, I'd love to share about that. I think that a lot of people might be able to relate to this too. Um, when I was younger, I, you know, I'm, I didn't actually really realize it fully the way I do now at the time because I was just being a child. So I, you know, we're in our world, right? Especially those of you who have any artistic inclination, which I believe everyone does in, in their own way and their own enjoyment. Um, <laughs> you're just kind of in your own world and that's the child that I was. So, but I had a, a very strong connection to animals and it wasn't uh, like a ah, freak out. It was more of this like silent kind of understanding, like I see you and you see me and it was just this powerful heart connection. And I know probably many of the people viewing this um, can relate to having a strong connection to animals. And so um, I didn't really realize until reflection later in my life uh, what that connection actually was about. But I do remember being able to kind of like spiritually hear them and what they needed, um, not as much in a direct voice sometimes, but more in like, you know, you would call it, that's why I called it intuitive because that's what it kind of felt like. You know, when you just get like a soft knowing about something or you just feel like you're hearing something, but it's different than a third dimension hearing. <laughs> and so um, I had this connection and I loved being around animals and um, I had, you know, you know, when people are like, oh, my dog never really likes anybody, they would always be drawn to me, <laughs> even as a child. And I know now I have a little dog with me in this, this time, and, and he actually is way more cautious around children um, because of their energy and their everything. So, uh, yeah, it, it's interesting that I just kind of had that connection to animals and I loved animals even I remember just sitting with the ants and singing to them and hanging out with them and <laughs> just being a child. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't, yeah. And I also had a connection to, to animals that we, we don't have on earth, which we might talk about a little bit more, but I realized now as an adult, the connection was also to what you might refer to as like animal guides, or I say heaven's animals, uh, not meaning they transitioned heaven, but just heaven as the soul world. So heaven's animals and the guides, I remember seeing them and having conversations with them and receiving help from them. Uh, yeah, it's a really powerful memory. <laughs> they, I had certain animals who were always around me and they had names and uh, I communicated with them very clearly. And yeah, you know, our imaginary friends. <laughs> Now, as um, you moved on into, um, you know, later after childhood into your early adult life, um, that stayed with you? Did it change? Did it further develop? How, how did that all unfold from, from those yeah. early childhood memories? Thank you for asking. You know, I think when I started just continued to grow, and now I know spiritually that they say 
uh, many different traditions say that, you know, your channels and your connection to source starts to shift when you're like eight, seven years old. And so I, you know, became a teenager and <laughs> did my own life, but I was always still taking care of other people's animals. People always asked me to take care of their animals. And I always had animals around me and coming to me. Um, then when I was in my late twenties, actually, um, mid to late twenties, I, got diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And uh, this is kind of what really put me on my healing journey, because I just knew there had to be a deeper reason and, a, and ways to bring healing to my soul, my heart, my mind, my body. Um, and I was experiencing so many imbalances emotionally and physically that I just went on a search <laughs> And I tried, I think I tried almost everything. <laughs> uh, so many things helped me. Um, and really when I came across uh, this soul healing called Tao healing and Tao meaning like source oneness, uh, it was, it's not religious, but that's the word that's used for the source in this, in this situation. So um, Tao healing, I, I moved to Hawaii, actually, I was guided by my heart to move to Hawaii to continue my healing journey. And I, I found the Tao healing center there. And I started focusing on learning these techniques to self heal myself and receive what they called blessings, which is just like positive information and frequency and vibration through the soul in many different ways. Um, and it started helping me. <laughs> so my health, my need for medicine actually decreased. And um, that doesn't always happen or ever happen really with people without a thyroid, unless they're, you know, doing some kind of other healing. And um, my emotional stability became uh, much greater. My relationships started to improve. I actually felt like a whole new person. <laughs> and so I thought, wow, I'm, I want to become a practitioner and share this with people who, who might be interested in receiving what I've experienced. Um, you know, it's like when you eat at a really good restaurant, or, right? You want to share, you want to tell everybody, <laughs> this was really good. Go here if you're interested. So um, I decided to become a practitioner. And um, actually what this led to as I started to heal more and more, which ties into what we're talking about today, is my spiritual channel started to open like when I was a child and I started to see images and spiritual beings and the animals came forward again. And this time, this way to communicate through, to the animals um, through my spiritual channels stepped forward, like so powerfully, like I could hear them just, I could just hear them when I was around them. They would tell me how old they are or anything they needed help with. And uh, it was so beautiful and profound and um, also kind of like, hmm, well, what do I do with this? <laughs> Is this really happening? So I think I didn't really realize until I actually got brave enough to share um, and to start using it to help animals and people and sharing it with people who were open to it or, um, you know, appropriately. And also I got my own little doggy who really, really helped me uh, learn the power of the communication um, in different ways and how it, I saw how it helped my life with him become so much easier to know what he's needing or thinking, right? We love our animals so much. They give us so much unconditional I love. I know you have a little kitty that you, a cat that you love so much. And it's just amazing what they bring to our lives. And sometimes it, it can bring up stuff for us when we're like, we don't know because we don't communicate with them the same way that we do if you had a child or a, a partner that's a human, right? So you don't always know what's going on with them. Um, and so this way of communicating uh, kind of paired with the blessings and stuff I can offer as a certified advanced Tao hands practitioner um, is amazing. It really can facilitate positive change for people and their pets and it's been an amazing journey to discover. I'm probably on about year seven or eight now where I fully stepped into this. Um, and it's just amazing behavioral issues, um, relationship issues with other pets, or if you bring a new baby or another pet into the house, it's really helpful. 
um, emotional, right? So many animals experience, I mean, they're really working overtime right now <laughs> because what I've learned through communicating with them is that they communicate through frequency and vibration and through their senses. So this is how they know when you're sad or how to comfort you or in the wild, right? This is how they would survive and, and combined with their senses, know where to get food and when it's time to seek shelter and, you know, different kinds of things. So it's really amazing um, how they communicate this way. And it pairs so well with the healing because this is the healing is, is basically frequency and vibration and positive uh, field healing uh, is the Tao healing from the source. So it's just amazing how they work together and their response because they don't have the human thinking to work through. <laughs> like, right? Like, is this real? Is this really working? <laughs> is this going to help me? Um, they just go into the frequency of it and receive it. And so it's really amazing. I do think that they pick up on what's happening with each of us and the world and what's going on around them. And sometimes they need our support to help bring balance to them um, because uh, I really think they've been working overtime, right? Especially like the last 18 months when lots of us have been home all the time, <laughs> they don't get any break. <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, this is, it really touches my heart um, that I get to do this work. And I have so many stories <laughs> of really miracle healings and different things that happened. And, you know, I never know what's going to happen. The only thing I know is that I just show up the best I can and offer service and do the best I can to offer the purest communication and it, it surprises me all the time too because they'll say things and sometimes I feel reluctant to say it because it sounds really silly or because I don't know right how they're going to connect to it so but I every time I just take that step forward into just letting go of that and sharing the message they want me to share it's so amazing how the people connect to it it's really beautiful yeah and so, uh, Catherine, the, the Tao um, source uh, teachings, instruction um, that you kind of dived into uh, heal, was healing for you. And then you, you apply that also with your uh, loving connection for animals to help heal them as well. Yeah. And I really think that healing is how I was even able to kind of uncover the depth of that ability, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask you, so it yeah. sounds like um, with the animals that you're, you're, you're coming in from um, a, a variety of senses, you're, you're hearing them, um, you also mentioned um, some imagery as well, kind of tapping into the vibration and frequency, um, that kind of like whole round kind of way of, of sensing, is that correct? Yeah, so basically when I'm doing a communication, I'm connecting to them on this level that they show us is real so well. It's that level of heart and soul. Mm -hmm. So it's, we can't always see it, right? Um, but it's like, have you ever gotten a phone call from someone you were just thinking about? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's it. That's the soul level. That's that level of message level of information. That's what we would call it in science -y terms. And it's also our spiritual level too. So it's, you know, you're like, oh, I was just thinking about you. Well, <laughs> that's an exchange of message and information that was felt on the heart and soul level. And so this is the level that I'm communicating to the animals on. And really, I just say hello to their heart and soul and ask them to please come share um, their, their information and whatever they want to share. And the ways that they do it is exactly what you shared was they show me images. So this is all through my spiritual channels is what I'm calling it. So they show me images in like what people might refer to as the third eye. Right. Um, and they also give me like a knowing, have you ever just had a knowing about something? Absolutely. And you're like, I don't know how I know that. <laughs> 
somehow I do. I just get this feeling, you know, we call that our intuition a lot of times. Um, and I can hear them audibly, spiritually also sometimes. And then the other thing they do, which is so unique um, that I'm just so grateful for is often to really clearly share their, me their message. They will just use my voice. Mm -hmm. and actually speak out um and it's obviously it sounds like me because it's just my voice <laughs> but the frequency and the vibration and the words and the message um are uh connected to them so i i really step out of my mind and everything and try to just be the channel uh for their message um and that can be really 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 it's very powerful for me too to be honest it's um it's really beautiful. And, and the way that I tell people is how you can tell if it's really a message is just like, you'll feel it in your heart or something will come up that you connect to so deeply. And, um, you know, sometimes they share things that are, when they get the opportunity to talk, <laughs> sometimes they share things that don't resonate with people yet. And I learned this. Uh, this was a valuable lesson in humility for me because I'm like, am I not doing it right? Am I saying the wrong message? Am I not getting out of the way? Was that my mind? And, and I'm not feeling that way, but they're not resonating with the message. So then as I continue to just share openly, um, you know, it would be like months after the session or weeks after the session, I would get a message from the human saying, oh, now I know what that meant. And so I realized that when they have their chance to talk, sometimes they share things that aren't really going to resonate with you in that moment, but maybe later on <laughs> they will. So it's just about letting go of what you don't connect with in that moment and just staying connected to what you're receiving in that moment. And then when you need to, the other stuff will be there for you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What? How beautiful this is! Really diving into the heart and and um, your yeah. whole um, unfolding with with the animals and and um, connecting with them and healing. I would love for you just to share a couple of stories that just come um, come to you that you can uh, share okay. with us. Yeah. So. Um you know, I'll share a few stories. So one, I, I actually have shared this story before because it honestly was so hard touching to me. It was kind of in the beginning of me sharing this publicly and being really open about the communication and a woman connected with me who I was connected with before um, when I was a hairdresser. <laughs> she, she connected to me and she she had a dog who was getting ready to cross over. Like he was older and you could just tell um, he was getting ready to transition. And she wanted to know if there's anything he wanted to say to her or anything he needed or anything he wanted. And she, um, so we had the session and, and he said to me, he said a lot of really beautiful things, but the one thing um, they often tell me how old they are and then show me kind of how they got connected to their human, which is usually very special. <laughs> um, there's a reason we're with these pets, right? It's, it's a soul connection. Um, and there's no doubt about it. <laughs> and most people would probably agree with that. So, um, he shared that he would like to try lemonade. And I was actually really hesitant to speak that out loud. Uh, but I did. And I'm glad that I did because I learned a lot in that. And she connected to it deeply. She kind of just gasped and said, I drink lemonade every single day. And what I saw in my third eye is him underneath this like glass table, looking up at like a beautiful glass with lemonade in it. And I said, okay, well, well he wants to try before he leaves before he transitioned and um she did try to give it to him and she said he you know he didn't really want to drink it but the deeper wisdom in that is he could feel how much she loved you don't drink lemonade every day if you don't love it like if you're drinking something every day you like it <laughs> you know <laughs> you something enjoyable like that right um 
And so he knew how much she loved it and enjoyed it. And he was a part of that. And he was showing me how, you know, he could experience her love and he sat right by her side while she drank it. But he just wanted to be in that connection of her love. And so, um, yeah, it's really, it was really, really beautiful and powerful. And so, you know, now that connection is, is there. And when she drinks lemonade, you know, she can think about that moment and that love and sharing that love with him. And I just think that's, that's so beautiful. Other stories are, you know, they talk about, um, you know, there's been serious ones. I'm not a vet, so I don't diagnose and I honor vets completely and a hundred percent. They're very important. And, um, you know, vets are, have such beautiful hearts to help the animals. You know, you wouldn't basically go through med school to help the animals if you didn't, didn't have that heart and and you know they have a hard job there's so many species and different animals to learn about and that's really amazing I actually have a much deeper appreciation about that um, but also sometimes what they can know could be limited also right um, so I've started to work in conjunction with different different um, professionals and vets and to really help it, it's good you want to know what the vet has to say um, but they don't always also with our animals the treatments aren't always available like they are for the humans or um, there, there's a lot to do with that but anyway so um, sometimes there's more insight and stuff that can come into uh, different conditions and different things that are happening that maybe we don't know what's going on or we can't find a medical solution for. So I got a phone call from this little kitty cat, well, from her mom, <laughs> from her foster foster parent. She was just fostering this three-year-old little kitty cat and she all of a sudden started throwing up violently and couldn't eat anything. So of course she took her to the vet um, and the vets really couldn't figure out what was wrong with her and she wasn't able to hold food down and she was losing weight. And so she had gone to, I think like three different specialty vet places and she was staying at the vet, um, cause they were trying to figure out what was going on with her. Um, they had her on anti-nausea medicine and a feeding tube and she was still kind of throwing up and, um, you know, she was a foster kitty. So they basically, they did an experiment, uh, exploratory surgery to make sure there wasn't a blockage. Um, that's something that they wanted to make sure. And, and there wasn't, and, um, so I, it was kind of the last effort, right? It had been, I think, 11 days. And if she didn't start to improve, they were just going to have to euthanize her because she was a foster kitty and they had done everything they could do for her. So I connected to her. We did a reading. Um, she needed the spiritual support and nourishment. Um, and, you know, some people believe in past lives and some people don't and in both is perfect. Um, but, you know, this, this person did. And so we were able to connect to some different messages and frequency and vibrations and soul memories that were coming up from past um, that were creating the, that had manifested themselves physically and were creating this condition for her. So um, as a Tao practitioner, I used the tools that I have. We did one 30 minute session of healing for her. And the next day she actually was able to eat and not throw up. Mm. And then we did another 30 minute session with her. And the next day she got her feeding tube removed and she got to go home. <laughs> Wow. So uh, that I know, I just love this story because, um, you know, they everyone had supported her as much as they could. So I really communicated with her also and said, look, this is really now's the time if you want to stay here, because we, we really got to do this um, because they don't know what else to do for you. So um, we did, uh, I recorded some practices for the, the, the guardian human to do, uh, to help her, to support her. She played this beautiful song called Love, Peace, and Harmony, which I use for all the animals. It's beautiful because they communicate through frequency and vibration. And this song just, it's such a beautiful healing song. It's actually used all over humanity. <laughs> 
um, there's a whole nonprofit like uh, there the there's a whole foundation about this this song and bringing this song to different areas of the world and all the things that have shifted and been created through just sharing this simple song. So I love to use it with the animals, and um, uh, so you can check it out if any of you have pets and. I highly recommend just trying to play it. Just play it and see if anything happens. <laughs> and you might feel it too. Uh, my doggy loves it. You know, he was really anxious and um, just came into the world that way. I had him since he was tiny and he was scared of really everything. And he's a totally different dog <laughs> now because <laughs> we've done a lot of work together. Um, but essentially, you know, this kitty, they didn't know what else to do. And so we did the Tao healing and the soul communication. And um, I just got a message a few weeks ago that uh, she got adopted. Oh, wow. That's awesome. How beautiful is that? Yeah. It's so interesting. Well, both these stories are so beautiful. And it's interesting because that soul communication, as you said, like that soul nourishment is really what the cat needed. Um, because the vets, you know, certainly have a prominent and important role. But yes. The soul also, you know, is, is you know, in, in my evaluation of, of equal um, standing. And because the, they had done everything, but you were able to tap into that literally that there were some past life issues going on with the cat that were surfacing. I mean, that's not something at least currently, maybe that will change that, that a vet would have access to. Um, right. So so your input was um, obviously of, of key value because it, that enabled the, um, you know, this uh, cat um, to be able to continue on because you tapped into what, what it really needed. Kind of far right. beyond, you know, medical medicine, which has its place. But which did. kept her alive, by the way. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, if she didn't have the feeding tube and everything. Right we wouldn't have even been able to get that far but yeah it was it, because what was coming forward to heal, heal was spiritual for her so and it was affecting her in a physical way so the teacher i study with shares i love this idea like you heal the soul first which is message information spirit and then the healing of the physical and the mind also follows um, and we never know what that's going to look like when we offer and facilitate um, the healing, right? The blessings, because that's not coming from me either. Um, but yeah, it, it, it transformed that the negative messages and information, or you can also think of it as that soul nourishment came in and it actually uplifted her frequency and vibrational field and allowed the lower frequency and vibration, right? Because we know that sickness carries a lower frequency and vibration. Science will also tell you that. Um, it allowed that to, to transform and to be released. Yeah, I know. It's so powerful. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I just wanted to touch upon the, the um, situation with the dog that you mentioned, that story where the um, dog was getting ready to transition and yeah. pass on. And what a heartfelt, beautiful gesture of the dog, because it, I have this sense, as you were saying, that it knew, you know, it was beyond the lemonade. It was, you know, giving the almost like comfort and peace and serenity to the um, animal owner once the dog had passed on, as you were saying. So once yeah. the owner was drinking the lemonade, it had like, oh my gosh, that everyday connection, you know, with that beautiful you know, um, dog, pet, companion. So what, how compassionate, it really gives us such more insight into the animals, you know, that we, that we aren't fully aware of. I mean, I just found that so uh, heartwarming and, and just so touching. So I'm so glad you shared those stories. Yeah, they're just in such unconditional love and present moment. Yeah. And, and that also touched me like, because now she has something physical to connect to that. Mm -hmm. but when the when their physical presence is no longer there it's that presence of unconditional love it can be really challenging for us um but their their actual presence of their love is always with us right um yeah there you know i do so many of those readings for animals who are getting older preparing to transition and it's absolutely 
so heart touching. It took me years to like be able to do it without crying just because it's so moving <laughs> what they share and, and I can feel it coming through. It's just absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's an honor for me, really, truly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead, Catherine, and touch upon your visual art. Also, related- yeah, do we have time? Yeah, let's let's touch upon that. Tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll look at some of the um, images. That you <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, So I know there's many artists probably connecting today and listening. And I really think art is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, Creating something from your heart through your experience and everybody does it different. And for me, I never considered myself an artist. (laughs) Um, I never studied, uh, but I always loved to be creative. Um, It was always an expression. It brought me joy. So that's how how I think you can tell if you're you know, people say they're not creative, but I'm like, but if you're just enjoying it, then it's creative, (laughs) you know, then it's, it's beautiful. Um, so, um, I mentioned that I can also connect to heaven's animals is what I call them or your spirit animal guides. And I do these readings for people all the time. And it is also equally as heart touching what it actually connects them to within them and the messages that are there for them. And it's often animals that resemble animals that you love. Like, you know, some people just love eagles. Some people just love, why? I mean, they're wonderful, but some people, you know, you have, do you have a favorite animal that you really love? Yeah, absolutely. I I love a lot of different animals, the dolphins, um, the eagles, almost like all birds. Yeah, and a whole variety of animals, domesticated and undomesticated, yeah. And so I learned that actually there is a connection to the animals who are guiding us and watching over us in a different realm, in the soul world, to the animals that we connect to here on earth. And I thought that was really, really cool. So I've been exploring this connection. And when I was in um, Australia in the forest, I was connected to a lot of different earthly animals, right? And a very special energy connected to in the forest. And this is where I learned how to uh, connect and do through soul communication, much like I do with the pets, Uh, but with the heavens animals, and actually, instead of bringing the words through, to actually bring it through on uh, canvas, through painting. So I will literally see in my third eye a paintbrush that looks a certain way and a color, and then I just allow my hands to be guided. It's it's really not, it's not premeditated at all. It just flows out and is created in that way and it carries their message and it takes whatever shape or whatever form it needs to start taking and I create these paintings for people with their heavens animals and uh, deliver it with a message from them and it's very heart touching yeah let's take a look okay 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 here we go who do we have? Oh, yes, beautiful. So this was actually painted uh, for a little girl. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, it was her heavens, her angels and her little heavens dog. <laughs> and look at that realm that they're in. And this is them, I think, just watching over her. And uh, this was to help her uh, where she was at in her journey to bring the love and light to her heart and to the joy and to sharing herself with the world. Yeah. Yeah. How beautiful and and how magical. Yeah. And then the cool thing is because it was created through, you know, the source connection, it can actually connect to everybody in whatever way they need it Mm -hmm. because it carries that frequency and vibration because of the way it was created. So, uh, Often I'll sell these prints and they come with a a very personalized message specific for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what a whole beautiful process. It sounds, Catherine, like you're literally guided from from step A to step Z through your third eye. Like you were saying, you're showing the the brush, you're showing the imagery. You just allow it to come through you as you're, you're painting. Yeah, I really have to have no attachment. And, you know, I was doing this live on Facebook for a while, but I was receiving guidance that I had to 
had to just do it. And um, I remember a little way through the first one I did, I was just crying. I was like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to paint. And I just heard like, you don't need to know how, just let it come out. And so what's interesting is I will take pictures of the paintings in their process because the, the first few layers of this painting could look completely different than how it looks now because it's just coming out. So I have no attachment. If I see that I just need a purple brush stroke all the way across the whole thing, then that's just what I do. Right, right. And Catherine, what medium is this? This is uh, canvas and acrylic. I mostly use acrylic paint mm -hmm. um, because it, it can be moved so quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it dries quick. <laughs> wow. All right, let's go to another one, Catherine. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, I love this one. <laughs> so I can feel it in my heart right when you showed it. This one I painted, I was guided to paint uh, Heaven's Butterflies. And it was in a time where I was in a really, really deep transformation of myself. And um, my guides told me to paint this and I could really feel the butterfly. It felt more like a, you know, giant <laughs> force <laughs> um, for, to help myself. So actually by just connecting and painting, I'm also clearing so many of my own blockages uh, because I'm receiving that nourishment that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, I originally had painted just for my own process. And um, I just sold the original of this actually, um, but I have, I have prints of it too. Um, a lot of people connect to this one. What do you, do you connect to it at all? What do you yeah. feel? You? Oh yeah, absolutely. First of all, just saying heaven's butterflies, like I'm already there. I mean, it's just like, that's just like, you know, I'm like done, I hear that, yeah. And yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, um, the colors and the movement and it's all like music. And um, oh, yeah. Just, yeah, it's just like it evokes such a sense of, of peace and liveliness and, and heaven and um, all those things, you know, connected into it. I'm feeling ascension too. Like I'm just feeling that right now as I'm connecting to it. So this is the powerful thing too, right, about art in general. But especially, you know, for me, it's like I just connect to this and I'm connecting to it where it needs to give me in this moment, mm -hmm. which could be different than what I needed when I created it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people receive these paintings, they can sit and meditate with them um, and connect to them. And it's really amazing what starts to happen for people and the messages they receive and the feelings that they have. And yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay. um before we wrap things up let's let's take a look at a, oh there we have you there that's there i am that's my dog everyone <laughs> oh isn't that sweet <laughs> mr ping oh. okay oh yes heaven's octopus <laughs> yeah this one's powerful would you like me to deliver a message to everyone i think that sounds great Thank you. Yeah. So um, anyone who wants to tune in also to your own abilities and senses and feelings, but you can look at the painting or you can close your eyes and I'll just demonstrate the soul communication that I was talking about with the pets earlier. And we're going to connect to this beloved one on the heart and soul level, the frequency and the vibration. And I'll just deliver through my mouth, through my voice the message uh, to everyone at this time. Okay, so I'm going to close my eyes and connect. This is Heaven's Octopus. Please offer a message to everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So just receive it with your heart. How? Dearest everyone, this is Heaven's Octopus of great love and persistence. I have come 
to greet each of you with my love, fluidity, flexibility, and sacred knowing. It is possible. All of it is possible. Many are going through transformation that is deep and significant. At this time, it may be transformation that you have been waiting for or wanting. It may be something you didn't know you needed. Whatever it is, whether the outcome has revealed itself or not, Know that following the flow in divine flexibility and love for your heart and your integrity of your connection to your heart will guide you to a place in your life that is much greater than you could have planned, organized, or imagined. Take time to dream and let go of the how. Follow the current and curiosity. Do not hesitate to dream, for we are listening. This is my message for you at this time. <laughs> thank you that was so beautiful. thank you to the octopus <laughs> thank you I had an octopus yeah could you That's feel that message I did you experience very strongly. Yes. you're good absolutely and I think that people uh, who are going to watch this will feel it too it's you know applicable and and I think almost you know everyone's life at this particular time so thank you yeah it's you know usually there they are messages that when it's done like this that are universal Mm -hmm. yeah. And that doesn't mean that it's not a good message. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Captain, yeah. Uh, we have just a few more minutes left. Um, I'm wondering before we kind of wrap things up um, with these gifts that you have, which are amazing and, and beautiful. And um, I'm so grateful, you know, for all that you shared. Are, do you offer, in addition to healing, you know, with the animals and the communication and then with the soul guided, uh, beautiful uh, paintings, um, do you help people or assist them, guide them in any way to, uh, let's say someone's watching this and they want to open their third eye, maybe it's related to animals, maybe not, um, but just to have that gift, is that, um, do you offer any courses with that? Is that something that you, you, you know, that you are thinking about offering? Um, us into like all the different things that you offer. <laughs> you know, I always go with the flow. So um, I do help people also. Yes. So um, I have done in the past and I'm gearing towards doing again very soon. Um, I received the message a few weeks ago. Um, I do group, like a group kind of mentoring, transformational uh, group sessions. I do individual sessions. Um, I, uh, do do courses, um, you know, what's really powerful. I just ended a six week course with connecting to heaven's animals. Um, but it's really actually about the transformation that we were going through. So each week, everyone would receive a message and we do a meditation with a heaven's animal. And it was guidance related to bringing harmony to your relationships, manifesting more abundance, building and cultivating a more self-love all these different things that we're all working on uh, right now. 
Um, so if anyone has an idea of how they want me to support them, they can always let me know. This is how things get created. Um, but yeah, I offer lots of different uh, different things. And the best way, I guess, to reach me um, is to email me or, or message me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And share with us, if you would, Catherine, um, your different social media links. And oh, sure. So that we can um, know how to stay connected. With okay, you. great. So um, my email is soulartcafe, S-O-U-L, artcafe at gmail.com. Um, you can check out my website for my pet services and more um, at soullightpetservices.org. Um, you can also see me on Facebook. Uh, it's soul, facebook.com. What is it? Soul Light, soul Light Pets. Uh, that's my, my page. Um, and I also have a business page on there, Happy Healthy Pets and Families but I usually go live from my profile page. Uh, you can check me out on YouTube. I go live there too. I have a show called the Pet Healing Show. I do twice a week. I also offer um, free meditation practices and different soul song blessings and services for your animal on my YouTube channel called Soul Light Pet. Soul Light Pet Services, I believe. <laughs> I need to get better at knowing what I need to share. And um, yeah, I'm going to be building my art website very soon. Um, I am so glad I just got so many beautiful pictures taken, uh, professional pictures taken of my art so I can start to spread that love and, and magic all over. And I also do uh, commission pieces for many people um, all over the world. So is that is that enough? Oh, and Instagram probably maybe, huh? <laughs> so um, Soul Art Cafe on Instagram and also Soul Light Pet on Instagram too. Yeah, all right, very good. All right, so we do need to wrap the show up. Uh, Catherine, how would you like to um, close the show? What, what words would you like to share with us? Well, I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to come on here and share my love. And I just think it's wonderful. You know, I was watching some of the shows that you've posted and it's really amazing that you do this. So thank you, first of all, everybody. <laughs> I give a round of applause and thank you so much. I know you don't want these shows to be about you, but without you, they wouldn't be. So I'm so grateful. Um, I just, I guess my message right now is just to tell everyone um, that, you know, whatever it is you're doing, however you're sharing your love, your gifts, or, or feel inspired to or wanting to, um, that it's really, really important. And um, you are so significant <laughs> to all of us collectively finding our gifts. So each time you can take a step forward into your heart and into really being brave and sharing your gifts. I mean, I think if I wouldn't have shared the animal communication, how many things would not have happened in my life and how many pets I could not, you know, wouldn't have helped. Uh, so it's really amazing um, to really, really know that your gifts are important. And if you don't know what they are yet, that's okay too. You're on a beautiful discovery of your heart and just to not be afraid to share your love and your light because we really, really need it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you never know where it's going to take you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you have really encouraged and inspired us on so many levels and, and the whole like, you know, pure heart connection with the animals and art and creativity and uh, the beautiful words you just left us with to be in our heart and to step forward and to share our gifts and encouragement and empowerment and, um, you know, really just honoring, honoring the self. How, how beautiful is that? And don't be afraid to reach out for help and support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have so much support. You know, I, I have lots of people I can just call to connect to when I need it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point too, Catherine. Thank you so much for being our guest today on Art and Talk and sharing so much about your love and, and your, your shining heart and <laughs> your gifts of spirit with the animals and with art and creativity. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you everyone for watching Art and Talk today. Please stay connected with us on our YouTube channel, on Facebook and on Twitter. And we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.